What's going on y'all? Welcome to this week's Quick Tip Tuesday. Today I'm going to be going over five must-have flounder setups that you should be having on your boat, kayak, shore fishing, whatever you do. These five setups are going to cover every scenario and any setup that you'll ever need when it comes to targeting flounder. But before we get into that, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button to see all of our future content. Also, if you're around the Mobile Bay and Gulf Coast area, check out our Patreon page right here to see all kinds of fishing spots and insider tips around our area. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it. y'all so going over these rigs we're going to do them in order of least importance to most important so the last one that i'm going to show y'all is the number one rig that i would not leave the house without it is absolutely a flounder killer but getting into it the first rig is a real simple rig y'all all it is is a seven foot rod uh medium light with a quarter ounce jig head with just a curly tail grub I mean, the grub's not the important part here. The important part is that you need a setup with a quarter ounce jig head out there on the water. Um, you can do a lot of things with these jig heads. You know, you can if you have bull minnows, you can just put a bull minnow on the end of your jig head and drag it around the mud. But you do need a quarter ounce jig head tied on for if you're fishing like marsh systems and creek mouths, areas of, of really shallow water uh, where maybe there's some snags down there. And if you threw a 3 8 or something like that, it would get snagged. Or, you know, just throwing heavier lures in shallow water, you just kind of lose that, that natural effect. So having a quarter ounce jig head tied on uh, is a must when you're out there targeting flounder. Going into setup number two, okay, we have a 3 8 ounce jig head tied on. Same thing, y'all, real simple, but if I'm out there flounder fishing, I don't want to be swapping between a quarter or a 3 8 ounce just because I see a dock that I want to hit. I want to be able to have something that I can grab and make sure that I get down to the bottom. So having a setup with a 3 8 ounce jig head is very, very imperative to be able to hit your deeper water areas uh, like your rock jetties or your dock pilings, bridges, things of that nature, or just ledges and drop-offs. You wanna have a 3 8 ounce jig head, once again, with a curly tail, paddle tail, whatever soft plastic you prefer, gulp. Um, one of my personal favorites is to just put a bull minnow on the end of that hook and drag it around bottom. Um, super effective for catching flounder, but yeah, that's the deal, 3 8 ounce jig head, all right? So now, getting into some of the more technical setups that we have all right we got the easy stuff out of the way okay the third setup in in order of importance is a tandem rig right so of all of those if i could have one thing to bring it would be the tandem rig if y'all don't know how to tie a, a dropper loop or in this case a butterfly knot check out this video right here and it's going to go over how to set up this rig but this is just a pretty simple rig y'all it's a tandem rig right now the thing to know about tying this tandem rig is that you shouldn't use 10 pound or even 20 pound test when tying this rig. You really need to use 30 pound test because when you add that extra knot in the middle of your leader, you're adding a, a weak spot in your leader. Whether you're tying a dropper or butterfly knot, whatever you're tying, it will make it weaker and having 30 pound test will ensure that you have enough strength to, uh, to not get broke off when trying to fight that flounder in. So we got 30 pound test to a tandem rig. Now the unique and cool thing about a tandem rig is that it allows me to fish deeper water but still maintain a light presentation. So what do I mean by that, okay? So what I have here is an eighth ounce jig head and I have a quarter ounce jig head. Well, what that allows me to do is keep a lighter lure on bottom and even lighter lure on top, but it gives me three eighths ounce of weight. So I'm fishing in heavy current or, or areas of deeper water and I want a lighter lure, but still be able to get to the bottom, boom, 
right and why would we want that okay because when you got current and things like that and you're jigging off the bottom the lighter that jig head is the more natural that lure is going to move coming back down to the bottom the heavier the jig head it's just going to drop like a missile right so this allows me to have more weight and still maintain a natural presentation when jigging the bottom all right all right all right so getting into setup number four okay and that is none other than a carolina rig right so you're thinking well carolina rig's pretty simple right but the way you set up that carolina rig is very critical to whether or not it's effective at catching flounders so we're going to go over how to set this rig up to make sure that you got it set up right and uh and be able to get out there and catch flounder on this setup so obviously this is a live bait setup so you're going to need finger mullet or uh, mud minnows bull minnows whatever you have you're going to want those right but in getting it set up so what we have here is a half ounce egg weight all right now you could go with a one ounce depending on how heavy your current is how deep your water is you know that's going to dictate the size of your lead here um, but if you're fishing and mild stuff a half ounce is plenty to get to the bottom it's one of those things where you don't want more than you need okay um if, if it if i can get to the bottom on half ounce i don't want one two ounces of, of lead down there because it's just more stuff that makes everything look not natural all right so next we have a power swivel it really doesn't matter the size of your swivel okay um, but you just want a good power swivel something that swings freely but the important part here is the size of this leader. All right, so we got 20 pound test, but if you notice, it's extremely short, right? I mean, that's a very, very, very short leader. It's probably somewhere around eight to 10 inches. All right, now I see a lot of people that are flounder fishing with 20 inch leader, right? Well, what does that do? That puts that, that mud minnow or that mullet 20 inches possibly off of the bottom of the water right because if you're sitting here inching that thing slowly around the bottom and that minnow swimming up he's completely out of the strike zone of that flounder it's two foot above that flounder's head but eight to ten inches as i'm dragging that weight around and stirring that mud up and that flounder's kind of looking around next thing he's going to see is a good piece of bait right there next to his head all right the last component of this rig is a kale hook in my opinion a kale hook is the best hook for anything inshore all right and it's a size number one not a one off a one off will be too big but a size number one is perfect so that is the carolina rig and how to set it up properly to catch flounder all right y'all getting into the fifth and final setup this is the one setup that if i could leave everything else at the house and bring this one this is going to be it it's none other than a flats jig with a paddle tail any kind of soft tail grub on the back end i mean these are just flounder killers all right and the one i have on here is a quarter ounce because i fish a lot of more system a lot of stuff that's less than three to five feet right so i need a lighter weight to get down there and it's none other than just a flats jig with a curl tail grub i got a down south lure on there right now but it doesn't have to be a down south lure it can be a gulp it can be it can be whatever you want it to be but the thing about this that is very stimulating to flounder is the the profile that those feathers put off coming into water right as you're jigging it it's flaring up right and it's making this, this lure just have a bigger profile and it's more stimulating to those flounder than let's just say a grub right so if you're out there and you're fishing with a grub and you know you're in the right spots and you're just not getting bit nine times out of ten if you'll just put something like that on there you're going to get hooked up so those are the top five setups that i would use that the only five setups that you need out there on the water to catch flounder y'all if this video was helpful hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already comment with any questions thanks for watching we'll see y'all next time